Hello friends, welcome to operating system class and in this class we will start a new chapter called inter-process communication which is otherwise called as IPC from second unit. This is another important chapter from second unit and here we will see what is uh, process synchronization and we will see how the race condition will occur in this uh, process synchronization and the race condition is explained by this producer consumer problem and uh, by using this bounded buffer problem. In process synchronization, first let us see what is data inconsistency. Process synchronization means more number of process will be executed on the CPU in an ordered fashion. Okay, CPU, this is P1 and P2, etc. up to Pn. So, more number of process will be executed on the CPU and these process will be communicated to each other. The process may be communicated to each other by means of message passing or shared memory shared memory so these things we have seen already in our previous classes isn't it the process communication itself here the cooperating processes which are called as cooperating processes a process can affect or be affected by other process executing in the system for example we are having p1 and p2 are cooperating process that means P1 may be affected by P2 or P2 may be affected by P1. Okay, then these two process are called as cooperating process. Okay, cooperating process may be either directly share a logical address. So these two process P1 and P2 can share the common address, address space. Okay, that is both code and data code and data that is program and data are allowed to share data only through files or messages data only through files or messages then these two are called as cooperating processes okay suppose if two process concurrently access the shared data that is p1 and p2 access the shared data simultaneously then it may cause the data inconsistency this is our problem okay if the shared data will be accessed by the both process simultaneously then the shared sorry data consistency may occur and how to solve this particular problem so here we are having various mechanisms to ensure orderly execution this is important if the process will be executed in an order then we can solve this uh, data inconsistency problem okay that means if the process will execute in orderly that the shared logical address space so that data consistency is maintained right and next let us see the producer and consumer problem or a bounded buffer problem here more number of process can access the shared data at the same time then it may cause the data inconsistency ok to avoid this data inconsistency we have to maintain the orderly execution of cooperating process right so to explain this particular thing we will see this producer consumer problem that is consumer producer problem and this problem will give solutions by using the buffers ok here let us see what is bounded buffer Bindroad buffer means multiple producers and multiple consumers share a single buffer. This is called as bounded buffer. That means more number of producers and more number of consumers share this single buffer. Then this is called as bounded buffer. Okay? Producer writes the data. Here we are having producer and consumer. What the producer will do? Producer will write the data to the buffer. And what the consumer will do? Consumer will read the data from the buffer. Okay. So, producer will write the data and consumer will read the data. Okay. And producer must block if buffer is full. Okay. Buffer is just like a queue. Okay. Producer is here and consumer is here. Producer will produce the data here. Okay. In this order and consumer will consume the data from here okay from like this the consumer will consume the buffer that is read the data right the consumer but must block if buffer is empty 
okay if buffer is full then producer cannot produce the or cannot write the data because buffer is already full right after that there is no space for writing uh, something on the buffer when come to consumer if buffer is empty then the consumer cannot consume the data isn't it because buffer is empty here the producer and consumer will share the common data called count which is of type integer okay the integer value count which is used to keep track of number of full buffers okay number of full buffers initially the count value is zero that means initially the count is zero when the producer produces the buffer then the count will be incremented by one okay next if the producer will produces another buffer then count will be incremented by 2 next 3 ok so the producer will produce us in this fashion ok 3 4 every time the count variable will get incremented once the producer produces the buffer 1 2 3 4 5 6 ok 6 ok when consumer wanted to consume the buffer then the count variable will be decremented see if the consumer consumes one of the buffer then count will be count minus minus that is 5 and next time the count variable will be 4 and next time the count variable will be 3 ok the consumer will decre decrement the count value and producer will increment this count value hence the count is a common variable for both producer as well as the consumer next let us see the producer ok producer the purpose of producer is produces the buffer how long it will produce until the size reaches n that is the buffer size is full ok while true while the condition is true then only the control enters into this block here we are having another while count equal to equal to buffer size that is count which is equal to n ok and ended by semicolon do nothing if count equal to buffer size then do nothing it will not do anything ok if count size equal to n means it will not do anything otherwise then only the control will enter into this block here this block ok buffer in in means input ok buffer will be produced input ok equal to next produced next produce then in which is equal to in plus 1 in value will get increased that is the buffer size got increased from 0 to this much ok once the buffer got increased then the count value will be incremented then the count value will be incremented then again we have to check whether count which is equal to buffer size no the count will not be buffer size then we can create one, one more um, buffer isn't it so the buffer size input buffer size got increased ok so it will go on up to the size which is equal to full ok this is called as producer the contrast of producer is called as consumer isn't it consumer consumes the buffer until the size is 0 until it reach the 0 size here the same while condition here while count which is equal to 0 that is if the buffer size is empty then do nothing first initially we need to check whether the buffer is 0 or not if it is 0 it will not do anything if we cannot consume isn't it otherwise next consumed which is equal to buffer out ok next consume equal to buffer out so here the buffer size that is the producer produces here the last one will be removed from the buffer ok this particular thing will be removed hence the size will be buffer size will be reduced ok the output size got reduced hence the count will be decremented the count size will be decremented so these things will be repeated until the count reaches 0 see likewise the count reaches 0 these things will be repeated so this is what consumer the duty of consumer is 
it will consumes the buffer until the count reaches 0. Here the count is a variable, count is a variable or data which is shared by both producer as well as consumer. Okay, if new uh, buffer is produced then the count will be incremented by the producer. If buffer is consumed then the consumer will decrement the count variable, isn't it? Here how the high level language code will be converted into machine level code because the CPU will understand only the machine level code. Okay. First let us see the producer side. Count equal to count minus minus could be implemented as register 1 which is equal to count because all the process are having its own register set. We have already seen in the previous class itself, isn't it? So, the process 1 is having its own uh, register set that is register 1. The initial count value will be stored register 1 and register 1 value will get incremented register 1 plus 1. Then the register 1 value will be again stored back to count. Okay, this is how the count plus plus code will be implemented. And when come to count minus minus and this is done by the consumer which is another process, isn't it? So, the consumer is having another set of registers. Here register 2 which is equal to count and register 2 value will be decremented minus 1. After that, the count value will be assigned uh, by this register 2. Register 2 value will be assigned by the count, okay? Because uh, here the producer is having one set of register and the consumer is having another set of register. Okay. Now, what happens if producer and consumer will execute at the same time? Okay, let us see uh, this example. Initially, the count value is 5. Initially, let us assume that count value will be 5. Now, the producer execute register 1 equal to count. Okay. So, register 1 value, what is the register 1 value? 5 will be assigned to register 1 value. And the producer execute register 1 which is equal to register 1 plus 1. That is register 1 value will be incremented by 1. Now, the value is 6. Simultaneously, the consumer will work now. Okay. What is the consumer value? If the consumer execute means count will be stored to register 2. That is register 2, 5 will be stored and register 2 value will be decremented, isn't it? So, it is decremented by 1 which is equal to 4, right? Now, the producer execute count equal to register 1. The producer execute count equal to register 1. What is the count value? Count register 1 value, register 1 value is 6 here, isn't it? So, the count value will be 6. And now, simultaneously, the consumer will execute the count value. Okay. What is the register 2 value here? The register 2 value is 4. Isn't it? Now, the count value will become 4. Right. If, see initially we are having 5. If producer produces 1, then the value will become 6. Then the consumer consumes 1. Then the value will become 5. If the value is 5, then this is correct. But what happens if both the things will execute simultaneously? The value will be, the count value will be either 6 or 4 now. Isn't it? It may be either 4 or 6. Hence, this is error. Okay, the value is not correct. If the result is 5, then the value is correct. But as per our example, the count value will be either 6 or 4. Hence, we, have, we will get the error. So, this is called as race condition because the producer and consumer will do raising for changing the count value. For changing the count value. So, this is called as race condition. Now from the above example, we got incurrent result, isn't it? The incurrent result because of both the process execute concurrently. Okay, both the process try to change the count value 
simultaneously hence we got the incorrect result that is several process access and manipulate the same data concurrently and the result which uh, the process produced depend on particular order in which the access takes place access that means the concurrent data access takes place which is called as race condition in two more question they ask what is race condition okay so to overcome this race condition what we have to do we need to ensure that only one process at a time this is very important so we have to allow only one process at a time to be manipulating the variable counter so the common variable will be accessed only once by the process for the process then only we can overcome this race condition okay to make such guarantee we required the process be synchronized in some way then only we can overcome this race condition let us see one example for this race condition when assigning the process id okay here we are having two process process 1 and process 2 and both the process can execute simultaneously the uh, function called fork okay what is the purpose of fork the fork function will create a child process okay so if both the process will call this fork simultaneously then this will create two children okay two children okay first one for process 1 and second one for process 2 okay once we create a process that is child process immediately we have to assign this process id okay next available process id is 2615 okay now what happen we have to assign this 2615 for both the children both the children but we have to assign only the one uh, unique name for each process isn't it we cannot assign the same process id for both the processes so this is a problem occurred let us see how this will happen so this is the cpu time cpu time is here so process 1 will call process 0 calls this fork simultaneously at the same time process 1 will also call fork hence the child will be created then we have to assign this process id for both the children we are having only this particular id 2615 then the same id will be assigned for both the children this will cause the problem what the problem we cannot assign the same id for both the children isn't it so all the process should have unique id unique id so this is the problem when the race condition occurs up to this we have seen some introduction to inter process communication that is process synchronization and we have seen the problem uh, the race condition by using this producer consumer problem and the bounded buffer problem okay and this is the question time students please write what is bounded buffer and you can give your answer in the comment box in the next class we will see the another important topics from uh, inter process communication thank you